Hello students, in this video we are going to continue with the introduction part of chapter 8 motion of physics class. Learning outcomes of this video are Define unit State important properties of a standard or a good unit Name four different systems of units which are obviously commonly used Discuss the SI system of units Now introduction part of this chapter is very important because although these topics which we are doing under the introduction part are not given in NCRT textbook but without learning them you cannot understand the chapter properly let us see our first outcome now define unit definition of unit is unit of any physical quantity is the standard chosen for the measurement of a physical quantity. Let us try to understand this definition properly with the help of this figure. Now if I ask you, find the length and breadth of this rectangular figure, then let us say you don't have a scale, you have this marker, then obviously you will use this marker as your standard for the measurement of these different lengths. Let us say, now you will measure this way, one, Two, length of this rectangular figure is two markers and breadth is one marker. So to measure the length and breadth, you have used this length of the marker as your unit. And maybe you have called it as marker. So your unit now becomes marker. Length of the figure is two markers, breadth is one marker. But do you think this unit is a good unit? Not at all. Because if I ask you, Draw the figure whose length is 10 markers and breadth is 5 markers. Obviously, you may not have marker at home or even if you have marker, it may not be of the same length. Similarly, when we talk about volume of liquids, then suppose you want to go to market and get milk and you ask, I want, you have a glass with you and you ask the person to give 5 glasses of milk. So for you, the unit becomes glass for volume of liquid. But is it a good unit? Again, no. Because the shopkeeper may have glasses of different size. So obviously this glass, which is your unit now, is not a good unit for the measurement of the volume of liquids. So I hope you have understood what is unit. Unit is the standard chosen for the measurement of a physical quantity. You have chosen the units here as marker to measure the length and breadth of this figure and glass to measure the volume of liquid or milk. But these are not very good units which you have chosen. So let us see what are the properties or important properties of a good unit. Which type of unit we should use. Let us try to achieve our next learning outcome which is you should be able to know or give the important properties or characteristics of a good unit. These five are the important properties of a good unit. First is a good unit should be well defined. It should not be like we have chosen before a glass or marker. It should be well defined like we know meter one meter is a unit which is used internationally and even when you go abroad one meter means the same length so a good unit should be well defined secondly it should be easily available you know you go to market and meter scales or measuring tapes are easily available for the measurement of length watches are, or clocks are easily available for the measurement of time third is it should be convenient to use. Obviously, meter scale, measuring tapes are very convenient to use. Physical balances, beam balances can be used to measure the mass. Next, it should not change with place and time. As I have said already, if it is a good unit, like meter is a good unit of length, then it should not change with place and time. Means today, if one meter is one particular length, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, even after one year, every time its length should be, one meter should mean the same length. And even when you abro uh, go abroad or go to different places in the world, one meter should mean the same length. So it should not change with place and time. And lastly, it should be cheap, economical. 
because we know meter scales, measuring tapes or beam balance, physical balance, watches, clocks, you can get them easily available and at cheap rates. So these are five important characteristics of a good unit. We already know that commonly used units or standard units for length, mass and time. For length, commonly used units are meter, kilometer, centimeter and there are many more. Similarly for mass, some of the commonly used units are kilogram, gram, pan, quintal. For time, commonly used units are minute, second, hour. Let us see a few systems of units which are commonly used for the measurement of for units of physical quantities. Let us consider this. FPS system. F stands for foot, which is a unit of length in the system. P stands for pound, which is a unit of mass in the system. And S stands for second, which is a unit of time in the system. Next is CGS system of units, in which C stands for centimeter for the unit of length. G stands for gram, which is a unit of mass in the system. And S stands for second, which is a unit of time. Third system, let us see, MKS system. M stands for meter as a unit of length. K stands for kilogram as a unit of mass. S stands for second as a unit of time. And this system of units is the very important and most commonly used system of units. SI system of units which is also called as international system of units. Now in this system we have meter only as a unit of length, kilogram as a unit of mass and second as a unit of time. Before we discuss the system of units which are commonly used, let us first see the definition of fundamental units and derived units. We know what are fundamental quantities and what are derived quantities. So these definitions will be very simple for you. Fundamental units are the units of fundamental quantities and derived units are the units of derived quantities, physical quantities, right? Now, we know that among the four system of units which I had mentioned earlier, SI, MKS, CGS, these are the system of units which we will be using in our syllabus and SI will be most commonly used. Now, we have seen previously that in both the systems, SI system and MKS system, length have the same unit, meter, mass has the same units in both the system, kilogram, time has the same unit in both the systems, second. Then what is the major difference between the two systems? There are not more differences, but let us see the most important difference which you should know. In MKS system, when MK system was developed, it was considered that in the world there are only three fundamental quantities and all other quantities can be derived from these quantities. And when SI system was developed later on, this is the most advanced system of units. It was, it was declared, it was found that these three fundamental quantities are not enough to get all the derived quantities. Because there are certain more physical quantities which, are, which should be included in the fundamental quantities list. Which do not depend upon other physical quantities for the measurement. So accordingly in SI system there are 7 fundamental quantities and in NK system there are 3 fundamental quantities. As I have told you there is one more major difference between the two systems but we will be discussing only this as this is required for your ninth class. In SI system, which are the seven fundamental quantities? These three are common, length, mass, time. There are four more fundamental quantities, electric current. And so seven fundamental quantities, seven fundamental units are there. Fundamental unit of electric current is ampere. You must have heard about this in the lower classes. Fifth is amount of substance. It is used in chemistry generally. Here the fundamental unit for this physical quantity is mole. Luminous intensity, which is a unit used in the study of light 
in the study of light that is optics. Here the fundamental unit is candela for it. And lastly temperature which you have heard very commonly. This is a physical quantity which is considered to be fundamental in this system and its fundamental unit is Kelvin. There is no need to by heart these units. This is just for your knowledge to know the major difference between SI system and NK system which you should know. That both the systems they have the same units for length, mass and time but in NKS there are three fundamental units and in SI system there are seven fundamental units. I hope you have achieved all the learning outcomes of this video. Thank you.